actually standing on the site um, of the oldest surviving passenger railway station in the world and the world's first railway warehouse. So um, these really important buildings are actually part of our own museum site. The Liverpool and Manchester Railway um, was the world's first timetabled, um, fully steam-powered commercial railway designed to carry passengers uh, as well as goods. And our station building was the Manchester terminus of that line and it opened in 1830 um, to connect Manchester, which was obviously the foremost kind of industrial um, manufacturing town in Britain, with the vital port of Liverpool. So building the first railway um, required overcoming quite a lot of engineering challenges. Um, George Stevenson had to work out ways of cutting through rock. Um, he actually had to cross a four-mile peat bog, um, which was known as Chat Moss, and come up with a solution to build a railway over that. The railways developed incredibly quickly. The Liverpool and Manchester Railway proved that rail transport was a kind of viable option and that it was profitable and that it worked. And so the number of railways that grew out of this just, just rose and rose. By kind of 1843, there were 2,000 miles of track and by 1900 there were 20,000 miles. I think the railways were probably one of the most significant kind of technological developments of the Victorian age. I don't think any other development changed society so vastly. For Manchester, the railways... Manchester was already industrialising, um, but the railways really kind of cemented Manchester's position as the workshop of the world. Trade could happen faster more effectively, greater numbers of goods could travel between Manchester and Liverpool. So that was the effect on Manchester. More broadly, horizons were opened. People could travel more easily to find work or to go on holiday. Ideas and knowledge could spread more quickly. So it really was a societal effect, um, as well as a kind of industrial and economic effect.